He's just an evil drunk. That's all he was. I've known him for years. The big thing was he was disguised as an RCMP officer. Nobody would ever expect it to happen in Nova Scotia. If he had to came to the door, he would have shot him. Mm -hmm. They were on the phone with the Mounties then and they said not to. He had enough time to kill her father, kill the dog, get a shower, have a bite to eat, change my clothes, and steal her car. What do you think about how it was handled by the RCMP? <laughs> In April 2020, Canada's deadliest mass shooting occurred because a gunman who used to live right here behind me, Gabriel Wartman, went on a shooting spree and killed 22 people in Nova Scotia. This house has since been taken down and today we're going to speak to some of the people in the community, including a former neighbor who believes he would have been next on Wartman's list. What was going through your mind when you heard about what was happening? Well, I was concerned about my partner because he likes to go for a walk and the uh, shooter did drive through Truro. It was uh, very um, sporadic about where he shot. He, he kind of had a plan, but he didn't have a plan. You know? right. Like he, apparently he had a list for some people, but other people it was just because they were there. Yeah, wrong place at the wrong time. There was some criticisms about the RCMP. Why didn't they go out? Well, I think it was hard for the RCMP because he was dressed as one of them, right? So how do you, uh, you're not, you're not gonna, you're not gonna shoot one of your own, own kind, you know, one of your own team. So. Have you heard about the recent allegations of political interference that are coming out from the public inquiry looking into the mass shooting? And if so, what's your thoughts on that? I mean, um, I already don't know a lot. I have heard that, that some people aren't happy but I, I don't know. I think they did the best they could. They, 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 uh, they had never uh, encountered a, a, a situation like that before. And it's hard, you know, because your emotions come into play too. You're, you're still human. And uh, even though they have training, like I said, the, the big thing was he was disguised as an RCMP officer. Right? And, we, and we are uh, ingrained in us to trust them. Everybody was traumatized. This is something that has never, ever happened. No, nobody would ever expect it to happen in Nova Scotia. So for everybody involved, the police, uh, obviously the people whose lives were affected, I believe everybody is in trauma over it. And, you know, you cannot, I don't feel you can judge. Now, I didn't personally have anyone affected. So I understand why people who were directly affected want to look into this and change it so it does they do better i truly believe they should have sent out an emergency alert on our phones uh there was a big error there now where why that ha didn't happen i have no idea and i hope that they will definitely change that and make that happen next time how do you think that the rcmp handled it and everybody who you know were, was part of trying to stop him um at the time it seemed like it didn't seem possible that they could have responded sooner you know when they started going everything with a fine tooth comb um uh i kept up with it on social media but of course they had to limit the information that was coming out as well um and then after the first few days i don't feel like it was covered so much as like that hour by hour thing that we were getting like as it was happening there was a lot of reports that the guy was stocking up on things like they already knew that the guy had an arsenal, so I don't know why nothing was done or even... So what do you think about how it was handled by the RCMP? <laughs> There's not a thing I could say good about what was handled by them or anything. Have you heard anything about the allegations of it also being sort of part of a scandal between the RCMP commissioner Trudeau's office to try to further a gun ban legislation against legal firearm owners? Um, I have heard rumors of that, but I mean, I, I kind of already suspected that when it went down. It kind of seems to be the way things tend to happen. <laughs> All right, so you just said that you lived real close. Can you explain that before? Yeah, I lived in Backville. <laughs> right 
behind his house I live. Wow. And I had a few conversations with him. Right? And what was that like? He's just an evil drunk. That's all he was. I've known him for years. Yeah. He's an evil drunk. So what were your thoughts when you heard that this evil drunk went on this mass shooting spree? I figured it was going to happen. How so? Just the way he was. The way I knew him. The way the police used to bang on his door all the time when he used to be his wife. <laughs> his girlfriend, right? And they just got sick and tired of going there. So they didn't go nowhere. And the old lady that lived right next to him, she used to call all the time and they just stopped going there. Wow. So. And then towards the beginning, there were some claims that they weren't aware. The RCMP said that they weren't they aware of him. They knew him for years. They knew of him for years, right? His MO was he'd, he'd be a mortgage broker, but he wasn't. But he was one of those guys who worked for mortgage broker. And he would mortgage your house. You miss one payment. He'd change all the locks, throw all your stuff in the dumpster until you get rid of it. In 24 hours, it was going to the dump. And he was called many times on that. Nothing was ever done. So how do you feel about how things were handed? I mean, granted, nobody anticipates this happening, but do you think the RCMP could have handled this better or should have, or they did a good job? They are either a bunch of screw ups or they're hiding something because a lot of them knew him and a lot of the darker police knew him and the Halifax police knew him. They knew him. I knew this guy for like 30 years. Okay. And I figured something like this was going to happen. I mean, the Mounties used to go up to his house all the time back here. All the time. I'd see them back there all the time because I'd park my car right there in back of his house. Wow. So they know all about what he's all about. They just, something's wrong, right? And, and when you say the Mounties went there, do you think that was because of calls of the abuse? I know no, you said that no, too. No, 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 or you think it was also no, just like a friend kind of thing? A friend thing. This was way before HRM. Okay, so the Mounties had no jurisdiction in Halifax or Dartmouth. Well, why are they visit them all the time? Right? The, the people, they just, they're not talking to nobody that actually knows the guy. Because anybody that knows the guy will tell you the same thing I'm telling you right now. Because you notice that every person that was involved in that incident, right, are either retired or off on stress leave. Well, what are the families? Families had to go back to work the next day, next two days or a week or whatever, because they got to work. So why is these all these Mounties that had nothing to do with it put on stress leave? Because they don't want the word getting out. What really what happened? Because all that inquiry is is the RCMP trying to admonish themselves. We didn't do nothing wrong. You didn't. Yeah, you did. You did everything wrong. They sent the friggin' guys home the next morning at six thirty in the morning. And said, yeah, he's probably dead or up in New Brunswick. No, he just finished killing four people, hanging out in their house for uh, two hours to have something to eat, and when the last one he he shot the Mountie. The other one ran away because he got shot in the leg, scared. He had enough time to go to Stuyak or Shubenacadie, kill the poor woman he went to school with, who was dentures, who worked for him, kill her father, kill the dog, get a shower, have a bite to eat, change my clothes, and steal her car. It was Covey. Nobody was on the roads. So why did it take them so hard time to find him? Why? After speaking to Nova Scotians in Dartmouth, where Wartman lived and worked, and also in Truro, the largest area that Wartman was able to get through before getting caught, we had to go to the place, Porta Peak, where Wartman killed 13 people in this community to hear what some of them had to say. And he did it on a dirt road here, just like this. But after driving through the small rural community that's been forever changed since this mass casualty and not coming across anybody in sight, we found ourselves at a gas station just on Porta Peak's border, where many from the community go frequently. You were just telling me you were here and you were working yes. the day that the massacre was happening. Yeah. Tell us a little bit more about that. Well, I went home that night. I worked the night before. I never seen no Mounties. It was going on then. It started out like quarter after 10 or so when I went home. So when I went back in the morning, there was in five houses, there was cops on the road and they had their big rifles. And I asked him, is it, is it safe to go around? He said, I don't know. So I didn't feel very safe. So I came to work and then I watched it all unfold. And all I had to do was warn people. 
And you mentioned that the road was blocked. Mm -hmm. um, it's my understanding there's not a lot of ways in and out no. here. So uh, how many ways are there in and out? And were they all blocked? Are you? Do you know anything about no, that? No, I, I, I came right around. Like there's a back road and Bass River comes right around. And I just drove back up through to work. Yeah. Now, did you know any of the people who lost their lives that day? Yeah, I knew a teacher. Yeah. Yeah, she taught my daughter. So what do you think... Um, could have been done better by any of the key players, whether it be the RCMP or the government? The RCMP could have warned people at 10 o'clock that night, and they didn't have to say it was a guy driving around in a mountain car. They said someone armed and dangerous is out there committing murder, and they didn't. They warned people at 10 to 11 the next day, and I think 10 minutes later they had shot him. So he was free to roam. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then what about the fires? Were you... Yeah, the, the, the wife went down. We used to live in economy, and she went down. Someone that was on Facebook, they said you could see the flames. So she went down the wharf road. You could see the places burning. And I guess we're also going to ask about the latest development coming out of the commission, which is there's a lot of discussion about possible political interference oh, to so. further yes. a gun ban. What's your thoughts on that? I'm a gun owner. Mm -hmm. I don't agree. Yeah. So, yeah, I think there was more to it than they're letting on. He's had a lot of scandals in the last five years, so. Well, and one thing we were saying is, um, you know, some people said they had their guns ready in yes. case he came to yes. the door. Yeah, I know people that, I know one that he went to visit, and he had to came to the door, he would have shot him. Mm -hmm. They were on the phone with the Mounties then, and they said not to. People moved out. Like, people sold their homes down there, but, like, a week later, they were buying them. People from a fire, well. come from a fire to buy them. It's strange. You wouldn't think anybody would want to live there, would you? But they sold them as fast as they went up for sale. You don't expect ever, that to ever happen. No. Like, but he was on the cops' radars for a long time, and they never... But they didn't have enough information to do anything about it, right? Mm -hmm. And the guns he used were either brought in through the state or they were illegal to start with, right? So This is a pretty small place. Did you ever come across Wartman in the past? Yeah, he's been in the store, yeah. He used to come down on the weekends. Yeah. And what was he like? Just a normal Joe. You wouldn't know any different, right? So, yeah. Tell us what it was like when you found out that there was a shooter on the loose in the area. Ah, it was quite a, quite a thing. It was, I was sitting at home and I seen the police go by and then the computer started going. And we heard way more on the computer than we heard anywhere else. Um, I don't know when we first heard a, a police report as to there was anything going on, but it was during that night is when we heard, you know, on the computer that stuff was happening down Port of it. I, I find it quite bizarre that they didn't know there was um, an emergency device in place to be used, that they didn't know that it was used and nobody knew who to call to see whether it was being used. And on the second part of it, I have a flip phone which doesn't get tweets. So, I mean, yes, my wife has one and all this now, but if, you know, what I'm saying, not everybody has access to all of the amenities, sure. yeah. you know. Um, yeah, I think it could have been handled a little bit better. And if it had been handled a bit better, there could have been a few more lives saved, yeah. you know. You know, how has the community handled this? How have things changed since then, or have they? Well, I know down in Portipet, uh, they're not quite as outgoing as what they used to be. Yeah. They don't like people traveling around down there, so they're not as comfortable with outsiders in. And for as what I know, there's been a few people wanting to sell their houses because of what has happened down there. There's a lot of talk right now coming through the public inquiry about the mass shooting of uh, collusion between the RCMP commissioner and possibly Prime Minister Trudeau and to further a liberal gun ban agenda. And shortly after that, there was a gun ban and now another one recently. What's your thoughts on all that? <laughs> well, I'm a, maybe a pro gunner, I, I, I do like guns. Guns should be in the hands of people who know how to use them. I've heard a lot of talk on that, and whether the general public knew that he used a particular type of gun, I don't think would make any difference 
as to what they're going to ban or not going to ban. Mm -hmm. If they ban all guns, there's other ways of, you know, committing crimes. Fortman found that way because he didn't have guns legally. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. You know, he got them in the U.S. and he got them out west and and then they're trying to put some of the blame onto his girlfriend, but I mean, if he was willing to kill people for whatever reason, he would probably do her in if she didn't do his bidding, is the way I looked at it. You well, know? She had to hide for, for hours from Controversy on that too. Oh, in what way? <laughs> one, one guy thought that she was a little too well dressed for being hiding in the woods all night. Hmm. I don't know, I wasn't down there. We have been able to come out here and bring you these reports thanks to those of you who have donated at our special website called firelucky.com. Now you may have guessed that's in connection with some of the allegations that are coming out that another horrible part of this tragedy is that the RCMP Commissioner Brenda Lucky conspired or colluded, however you want to call it, with the then Minister of Public Safety and Prime Minister Trudeau's office and almost risked putting the investigation into this mass shooting at risk to try and further the liberal gun ban agenda for law-abiding firearm owners, which this mass murder was not. So thank you so much for those who continue to donate to help us recoup the cost to be here at firelucky.com and if you can go ahead and chip in a few bucks there we really appreciate your support.